Hi, I'm Susie McAlpine, author of the Leaders Digest blog, New Zealand's most popular leadership blog. Have you ever wondered what to do to keep your business, your reputation and your data safe online? Well, you're not alone. In two recent research studies by the World Economic Forum and KPMG, cybersecurity was cited as one of the biggest concerns that chief executives have. But if you are like most senior executives, a conversation around cybersecurity leaves you a little tense. It's a deeply technical topic. Uh, the issues are both complex and varied. But fear not. Today I am interviewing one of New Zealand's top cybersecurity experts, Michael Warmansberger. Michael has held a number of senior leadership roles in cybersecurity and he's well known for chairing the New Zealand Computer Emergency Response Team Advisory Board, which advises the New Zealand government on cybersecurity. So welcome, Michael. Thanks for coming along. Hi, Susie. My pleasure to be with you today. Now, I want to start the interview by quoting to you a recent uh, quote that I read in a Harvard Business Review article, and it mm -hmm. says... When security breaches make headlines, they tend to be about nefarious actors in another country or the catastrophic failure of technology. These kinds of stories are exciting to read and easier for the hacked company to admit to. But the reality is that no matter the size or the scope of the breach, usually it's caused by an action or failure of someone inside the company. What's your take on this? Look, that's usually true. Uh, there was a worrying trend for a while with companies that got breached to say, look, it was sophisticated actors, you know, there was an advanced threat that caused our problem. Uh, unfortunately for most companies that do get breached, that's not the case. What we find when we look into the stories is that actually that company failed to maintain an adequate and a reasonable standard of security. And it was, uh, it was their own failure to apply basic hygiene that led to them being breached. Mm. There are sophisticated threat, threat actors out there and there are some sophisticated threats, but typically what's causing people to have these major breaches is actually a lack of attention to the basics. Mm. And that brings me nicely to my next question. What are some of the biggest myths that you see around the cybersecurity space? Well, there's a couple of really well-known ones which were almost uh, cliches like uh, I'm not a target because of my industry or the country I'm in. Uh, one of the first things that we teach young cybersecurity professionals is that obscurity is not security. So it doesn't matter that your your country or your sector or your, your um, uh, your, you know, your business is not well known, potentially you are a target. Um, mm -hmm. Another really common one is that uh, you know, security belongs in the IT department and we've been saying for a long time, look, this isn't the case, it's actually a, a business issue. Uh, but the surprising thing is there's a couple of uh, things that we've learned recently from analysis of evidence about things we've been saying uh, as people like me giving, giving advice, uh, like telling users to change their passwords every 60 or 90 days. Mm -hmm. We used to say that we thought that improved security. It turns out, actually, when you look at the evidence, uh, that's not the case so much. In fact, it may even be detrimental to security. So our thinking's evolved a little bit on some of those things as well. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you see CEOs and boards make when it comes to the cybersecurity space? I think one of the fundamental mistakes I see is that people don't understand how much work, how much time and how much money is required to address the cybersecurity problem. And that plays out in a number of ways. Uh, you know, people have asked me often, what's the one thing I should do uh, to improve my cybersecurity? And unfortunately in security, there's no silver bullet. Uh, you've seen people wait too late to start, so they wait until they've got a customer knocking on their door asking about their cybersecurity, and then they realise that it's actually going to take years and a programme of investment and lots of work to get to where they want to be. Uh, and you've also seen that play out with um, organisations thinking they can solve the problem by hiring an information security manager. And so you have one person trying to deal with what is a complex cross-cutting strategic issue and often that person won't succeed at what they've been tasked to do because they don't have the resources or they don't have the influence across the organisation that they need to, mm. to solve the problem. So given that, what advice would you give to chief executives uh, around, uh, I guess, the first step? If they're, if they're in this situation where uh, I know it's a big thing, I know I need to be across it, uh, but I'm not quite sure where to start, what would be the first steps that you would recommend a chief executive to take? Look, I think if, if a chief executive or a board can get expert advice in this area, then it's well worth them doing that. There's a, there's a lot to know and uh, there's no need to, to, to confront this all on your own. Mm. I realise that can be quite hard because sometimes finding a, an expert that you can trust as being credible is actually one of the most difficult steps. But I think that would be, that would be a good first step. 
Uh, but then I'd say for the, the chief executive and the board, their role, uh, if they're working with you know, someone like me or their own internal security team, uh, one of the first things we're going to ask is, well, what matters most to you? What's your most important mm -hmm. uh, asset? Is it, is it information? Is it, uh, is it a physical asset? And what are you trying to achieve as this business? What's your strategic objective? It's very hard for a security professional to help you protect something if you can't tell, it, tell them uh, what it is that you want to protect. That you actually want to protect. That. That's just so the case with all of those strategic issues that are facing chief executives really. You can't just export it in. You've got to understand what are the, the fundamentals. Um, you talk about strategic skills and one of the things that we've really seen um, is this shift from it being more of a, uh, less of a tactical issue to uh, more of a strategic issue, one that affects the board, the chief executive, uh, as well as the CIO. Um, how do you get cyber, sort of, I guess, cyber ready, as it were? And what are the different roles of the CEO versus the CIO, for example? I mean, there's no such thing as perfect security, so I think ready is a relative term. Uh, but I like to think that uh, what, you, what you really want is you want to have a plan. Uh, so if you, have a, if you have an incident, you want to know how you're going to respond. You want to have tested that plan so you can prove that it's worked and you've identified gaps. And, and continuing to improve and close those gaps is really important. And then through that planning, what you'd also expect is that you'd identify some capability that you need in, in terms of uh, uh, supporting your response. So it's a bit like a fire evacuation. If you have a, a fire evacuation plan, that's great. But you also need to have drills and smoke detectors mm -hmm. and you need to have fire trucks ready to roll as well. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you haven't really done enough. It's interesting you mentioned the word capability. Uh, I think if you were developing a cyber security workforce, and I know that uh, talent management and uh, getting the right people on board to deliver on your strategy is, is big across the board, and I imagine it's exactly the same in this area. What would be the right skills uh, in t to develop in a cyber security uh, workforce, and what steps could you take around that? Workforce uh, capacity in cybersecurity is a massive issue. I mean, mm. it's, it's acknowledged that there is a worldwide shortage of cybersecurity professionals. Uh, cybersecurity is a broad discipline. There's a range of subdisciplines with it, so you need people with a range of skills. Uh, but I think organisations really need to understand if they're privileged enough to have experienced cybersecurity people in their organisation, that they need to support those people and help them to continue to grow and develop because this industry is moving at a, at a great speed. Uh, those people will be struggling to keep up with changes in regulation, changes in technology. The job demands on them are going to be growing massively and if they don't have the time and the resources to connect with their peers and the industry and, and to attend conferences then they'll be falling behind or they'll be under pressure and, and, and possibly burning out. So I think organisations need to be conscious of that but they also need to uh, be, be clear that, that there's, there's ways they can boost the cybersecurity workforce, for example, by bringing in graduates or lateral hires. Mm -hmm. If you find someone who's interested in the space and passionate about them, and you put them together with an experienced professional, I've seen that deliver great results. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea, really good. Uh, and I think that's relevant right across the board, isn't it? So that's great. Um, Finally, we're, as we say goodbye to 2017 and we're moving into the next year, uh, what do you see the biggest trends in cyber security? For example, what impact will AI have on cyber security? Again, great question. I think in terms of trends, what I expect is some of the trends we've seen for the last couple of years to continue. So uh, what I've seen so much is not that uh, attacks become more sophisticated, but they become more persistent. So instead of mm. maybe seeing an attack once in a while, we're just getting hammered with them. I think that'll continue. Uh, we've got lots of businesses moving to the cloud. We've got people adopting agile IT approaches. Those trends are going to continue and they're only going to accelerate. So I think we're going to, we're going to see that. Uh, in terms of AI, uh, it's, it's a really interesting situation. There are a lot of vendors out there who are working on AI and some of, them, some of them have got solutions that are having really, really good success. So I think this is going to help us solve the problems. But we've kind of seen this movie before in security as well. We've seen new advanced defences and they come along and they solve a problem, but then you're in an arms race with attackers. And uh, I think what happens remains to be seen, but I will expect that, to, that story to continue to play out again. You'll get more sophisticated defences mm -hmm. and then the attackers will lift their game as well and you'll, you'll be caught in this, this, this ongoing race. Which is why your earlier point about continuous improvement is such a relevant one, isn't it? It's about that constant uh, improvement and keeping up with what 
what's going on. Um, I have to ask, and you might not, I'm putting you on the spot here, but you hear about these horror stories uh, about cybersecurity attacks, and especially coming out of the States, mm -hmm. um, and the impact that that has. What's a particularly horrifying, <laughs> we don't want to frighten everybody, but I'm always interested to hear about some really big uh, cybersecurity stories that you've heard about. Oh, look, there are, there are almost too many to remember now, but I mean, I'll pick up on your point actually of being horrified. I yeah. think that, that one of the things that we've um, probably done in, in cybersecurity is scare people beyond the point of usefulness. Yeah. I think a little bit of fear is motivating, yeah. right? But yeah. when, you, when you become terrified, it's actually paralyzing. And I think we need to dial the fear back down. I mean, this is a serious problem, we, but we need to approach it with a bit of confidence and, and, and professionally like we deal with other problems. But I think what I, the other thing I'd draw out is, is a distinction for companies that, uh, depending on how big they are and how they respond to incidents in terms of what their outcomes are. So uh, we've seen some, you know, small companies quite often don't survive a serious mm -hmm. breach. And, uh, you know, there's been pl plenty of examples and even in, in Australia and New Zealand of companies that have simply gone out of business because they yeah. had a, a cyber attack. But uh, larger companies tend to survive, but you might be talking about hundreds of millions of dollars of damage. So uh, a very high profile campaign recently was the Not Petcher campaign, which was a piece of a ransomware. Uh, the major companies that were affected by that were probably not the target of that campaign. They were just caught in the crossfire. But you know, we've seen two or three companies come out and say, look, the, the cost to us is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. If you had one tip to say, OK, we've had a cybersecurity breach, what do we do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, particularly not only with the public, but with other key stakeholders like um, you know, shareholders. What would be your piece of advice on that? First thing is take responsibility for it. Don't try and shift the blame. I mean, don't try and blame a, a sophisticated attacker or some poor person in IT who made a mistake <laughs> this week. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you, the, be, the best solution is to be prepared, but once, once you're dealing with an incident, you are where you are. Um, I think, you know, say what, be as transparent as you can be. Tell people what you know when you know it. Um, but try and avoid putting information out there that you'll have to later correct because that affects your credibility. Sounds like PR 101. Well, thank you so much. And I hope that that has given you a few tips and tools to start your cybersecurity journey. Uh, and once again, thanks so much, Michael, for giving some of your expert tips to the Leaders Digest. Pleasure. Thank you.